Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of... And we, of course, are still in Medieval Dynasty Season 1, Episode 17. <clears throat> Pardon me, 17. Wowzers. So, not too, too much to report in. We're uh, on a bit of a... Uh, what my uh, yeah, I can't even talk here. A uh, bit of a honeydew list. We're on our way over to talk to Alwyn right now. As soon as we deal with the local, hey, how are you? And like that, man, I'll tell you, that axe, it sure does a job, don't it? I gotta say, it's even better than my spiked cudgel. But, as I said, we're on a bit of a, a list of things to do here. We need to go and talk to Elwyn and uh, <clears throat> move that along. So what it is is basically, well, exactly what it looks like. We're going to have a shoot-off and see who's the better marksman here now. I'm a little further back than I need to be. I could go up, oh, there's a couple of million plants in front of me. I could go up at least one more, probably two, and still be within that 20 meter mark. But let's just see if I know what I'm doing, shall we? Now, there's going to be a bit of a drop, but I'm, see, I'm still kind of breaking in the crossbow thing here. Um, it shoots a little differently than the bow. The drop is not nearly as much as far as the trajectory goes, right? But uh, we will see. Anyway, <coughs> the idea being is uh, you got to get more points than Elwin. Elwin, I think, has 96 points, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, that did not go as planned. So here, take another 100 coins from me. And we'll uh, tuck it in here. Let's see, well that didn't go according to plan. Here, take another hundred coins from me, and we'll tuck it in here. Well, that didn't go to plan. Here, take another. <laughs> this is getting a little redundant. Uh, anyway, I think I've had enough of this shape for a while. So, clearly I've got some uh, work to do on my marksmanship, as it were. And now, with Alwyn dealt with and out of the way for a while, and we do have multiple seasons in which to complete the Alwyn quest. I think I've got like 14 or something. Oh my, a snowman. Now, who built a snowman all the way out here? Oh, uh-oh. Okay, so the snowman was a trap. I see, it's a trap. Okay, a little close for the crossbow. Back it up. Where's my axe? Come on, come on, come on. All right, you down with you. All right, one nine. Oh, there we go. Say hello. Say hello. Now let's go play dodge dart with this guy. Okay, here we go. Let's try not to get stuck. There's one. Oh, and oh, schmutz. That was close. I felt that tickle my ear on the way by. <sighs> well, what do we got? What do we got? Ooh. Oh, score. Nice. Second crossbow. That works. And a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And we'll sit down and rest these weary bones. Okay, well, that's enough sitting down. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just in the mood, just messing with you. <laughs> anyway, we'll go around and we'll uh, we'll clean up the area here, and then we gotta <coughs> go and. Uh, the wife wants me to go and talk to this lady over here. She's uh, some sort of inventor, and of course, gathering as we go, always with the gathering, and we'll check out the local peeps and see what we got. Ooh. I say, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking for field hands right now, so this lady here is quite good. There we are. How would you like to come and live with us in our little commune? And all you got to do is give me everything that you own, and we'll pass it along to the king, because that's how it goes. <laughs> okay, so here's the inventor lady. Okay, well, indeed, and of course, okay, and uh, what? <laughs> I 
I see. So she's invented the spork. Cool. Handy dandy little item, if there ever was a handy dandy little item to be had. So, of course, I've never really thought about just, uh, you know, ho de do and ho de do. Kind of runs in my family, you know, the, the whole genetic thing. It's neat that she's onto this whole two fetus into one thing. You wouldn't think back in 1160 that they'd be thinking in those terms, but uh, why not? I mean, they, they know that bathing too often causes disease, you know, so, I mean, they clearly had science, and, and we can trust the science, right? Because, yeah, they're not owned by anybody who pays them to say what they want. No, not at all. No conspiracies here, man. <laughs> okay, so she wants us to go hunting various types of boids. So here we go. Uh, swing and a miss for the batter. And that's one down. Okay, so moving on here. Okay, and a swing and a miss for the batter. <laughs> like I said, we're still working on this crossbow getting used to it a bit. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But anyway, moving right along. <clears throat> we just got the duck to go now. Okay. There we go. Okay, done, done, and done. Let's go back and see the crazy... I mean, the inventor lady. Now, she should be right around the corner here. Yeah, there she is. Apparently, she doesn't get cold or need to move. <laughs> What's this now? Uh, okay, fair enough. She needs time to go over things. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Luckily, I have my old uh, backpack with me, and in the backpack, my bedroll and other such necessities for camping out. Yeah, we'll cook up some of that bird meat we got. Found out a interesting fact yesterday I was just days old when I found out um, speaking of bird meat I heard yesterday that in Japan on Christmas Day rather than having a turkey or whatever I guess KFC is the the thing on Christmas Day over there I don't know why I didn't know that but yeah so the one day a year where KFC just explodes in Japan, I guess. <laughs> little UFI for you. Okay, lady, we're back. And what do you mean? Everything was for nothing? Oh, not at all. We found the answer to what we were looking for. Yeah. The goose feather is uh, the way to go. It's, it's always been. It always will be. Good old goose down, man. <laughs> getting down with a goose. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. No. <clears throat> okay, so we have a new arrival. And we've completed the mother of invention. And, of course, here we are back home again. And it's cold. Oh, man. The wife will not keep a fire going in this house. It's always cold when I get in here. I hate going to bed in a cold house. So we're going to nip through winter and uh, through the magic of, ta-da, it is spring. Spring has sprung, the grass is riz. I wonder where my zigzags is. Yeah. <laughs> One for all of us uh, 420 friendly types out there. Brothers and sisters of the vert, as it were. I've been a, a friend of the vert since, uh, let's see, Summer of 1968 was my uh, first introduction. Uh, yeah, so a couple of days. <laughs> yes, I'm three days older than dirt. <laughs> but anyway, so just tooling around here and just checking on things, get things caught up in the fields a little bit, give the, uh, the workers a hand. And, of course, the offshoot of giving the workers a hand is I'm getting experience points for doing that. So we'll take our rye now and we'll uh, thresh it. Give that child a darn good threshing. Yeah. Oh, the violence in our history, eh? 
Okay, another poor job done well. And just again going around converting. Winter's going to be coming around again, so while it's the good weather, I'm going to convert from uh, uh, daub and wattle up to stone. And it's a better insulation, of course. And the offshoot of that again is uh, the people who live there, their moods will improve. And now I finally have nine fields. So what I'm doing is I'm just converting my fields over quickly so that I got one crop per. And speaking of fields, while I was putting in my fields, the last two fields, I looked over here and what do we find? And I mean, it's a stone's throw away from uh, where my, my latest fields are, you know? So pretty cool beans on that. We got clay nice and close to, to where we live. I don't have to run all the way over to Sombor's place anymore. I mean, I knew there was multiple locations on the map for clay, but I'd never really investigated. And to stumble on one so close to home, well, as the Rad Brad would say, how convenient. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually watching uh, Rad Brad right now. He's doing a, uh, a fairly new game for PS5. Um, Oh, what is it? Something fallen. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite enjoying it. I'll have to get the name for you. Atlas Falling? Atlas Fallen? Something like that along those lines, anyway. But, uh, <coughs> pardon me, kind of reminds me a bit of the Valhalla-esque. You know, you're uh, very, very busy, 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 hit the foes, move along, do the quest, beat the boss fights, move on to the next level, that kind of, where you really got to kind of be on point and just glued, zeroed into the game, you know, kind of an action pack thing. Far too fast moving for the likes of someone such as myself, a long-haired, well-fared, bleeping gnome such as me prefers the quieter games. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as you can see, um, we've done a bit of enlarging with the fields there like i say and whatnot we put in obviously some more housing um, these houses over here will be for my vendors my stall keepers which i'm just in the process of building we got this one completed and we're selling food and the thing with the stall keeper i'll show you here just see how she's got three underneath her diplomacy so that's what you want somebody with good diplomacy they make good stall holders and the like and yeah, I thought this would be about the edge of where my village would be. How silly of me. It's leaked out way past here, man. So yeah, on the right, I've put in yet another storage area because we, uh, we need more space, man. Apparently I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but yeah, what a beautiful scape, eh? Just loving it. Like I say, man, kudos to the... Uh, the builders of the game because you guys got it right you, you did an excellent job on it hey old taurus bulba he's a handsome fellow is he not oh listen to that ah the sounds of life love to hear the giggles of the babies oh i gotta get out here and clean up these rocks man there's just so many. Winter's the perfect time for the whole stick and stone collection thing because you can see them so easily because, well, the undergrowth and what that's all gone, right? It's just a white scape. Hey, Bar Ram you. Yeah. Here we are. Taurus, how you doing, buddy? Look at you. What a handsome guy. What a handsome guy. And that's his missus over there. I'm hoping to uh, have them cab out come the spring. You guys need to get on this manure in here, man. Okay, we got food. Good, good, good. So, yeah, we put in another chicken coop. It's not that I need the eggs and the feathers, because I don't. But I just want, you know, the sheer mass of chickens that I can have running around. And I've done the same with the pigs. This is the second pig sty. So we got double the amount of pigs we can have running around, because you all know me. I like my pigs. And like that, and like that. Yeah, speaking of which, look at you, you beauty. So, oh, hello. I mean, uh, bar you. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
And then of course over here, we got the fold for the sheep and the goats. So that's new since the last time we were here. I took out the stable and the uh, the donkey shed because I have no plans of acquiring either one. I might get a donkey down the road, we'll see. I mean, it's early days, you know, there's so much more to do in this game. And there we are, our second chicken coop, hen house, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then of course we've got the goose house over here. Wouldn't like that. So yeah, like I say, things are kind of coming along. I'm changing a little bit here, a little bit there. We grow as we need to. Um, I'm looking forward to converting these uh, fences over to stone. I think that's going to make a, a nice improvement around the area. And I think he just took my money purse. Did you see that? He walked right by me and then pretended to fall into me. And he played the victim like, oh, I'll bet you he just took my money, man. <laughs> anyway, we'll just uh, have a quick drink here, top off. I'm liking this area. I got to do a little bit more with the decoration, I think. I don't know. Once I get my uh, my lighting in, I don't want to just do standing torches. I want to do the proper kind of, oh, it's, you know, like a, like a hangman gallows light. You know, you got the post that goes up and then one at 90 degrees out like a gallows would go. And then the light hangs down from that. So once I can get enough experience that I can open that up, then we'll start putting some soft lighting in. That's going to change the aesthetics as well for the night time and like that. But yeah, now last time you were here, we had the big fields in, but I don't think I had the new dwellings and the new, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, field uh, station in. But with these ones and then the two that I've built out over on the... Uh, pardon me, out over there. Um, that gives us the nine fields. So now we can have one crop in, in each field type of thing. Eh? But I got a couple up here that are a little tiny. So I may change them. Yeah, you can see that building way out dead bank center right there. Now just past that is those clay pits that we are in. And that building there is my uh, resource station out by my uh, my newest two fields. So that's how far the village has uh, has rambled now. It's uh, spilling out all over the place. And miles to go, miles to go, as we say. Now, which one are you? Ah, the second child to the village, Ramalama Ding Dong. Yeah, she was born just after Dieter. And I believe, I think there's a third child floating around here somewhere. And more on the way. There's my boy. Hey, Dieter. How you doing, buddy? So it's funny. Now, you think you're seeing him like this. Once he turns 18, I will then retire, and we will see this game through his eyes because we'll start playing as Dieter. And I'm guessing at this point, but I presume he's going to find a wife and carry on and uh, like that. We'll see how far the game actually goes, yeah? You know, anyway, we'll have a little drink, light this fire, kind of take the chill off. And we should probably have a quick little wash up here, make myself all presentable for the little missus after a long, hard day. There we go. Oops, speaking of the little missus. Hey, Hermione Gilda. Hi, honey. Did you come to see me? No? How was your day? Really? Okay, then. <laughs> All right. Well, you uh, enjoy whatever the heck it is you're doing. I'll see you home later. But uh, I think this old man's going to head her home and hop in the old fart sack, as it were. There you go. Even Dieter's got the right idea. We know, don't we, buddy? It is quitting time. Hey, what are you freaks doing in my yard? <laughs> yeah, I put in a, uh, a gathering area here. I think the more the merrier as far as the gathering areas go. I'm mean, wanting to see if it's going to uh, improve their mood uh, any more quickly, per se, by having multiple gathering areas and like that. But time will tell on that one. We're going to have to go through a, a year or so of it. 
Oh, again with the cold cottage. I don't know. What day is it here? Okay, right on. And we'll slip into next season, I think. Move this game along a wee little bit. Oh, what's this? The night is dark and full of howls. Yeah, it's 1160 Europe. You bet the night is dark and full of howls and people are scared because people are scared every single moment of every single day because it's 1160. Yeah, and like that and like that. All right, so we did the, the thing and we calmed them and we, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all right. I'm here. And everybody's moved and proved. So we got like that. Improved mood is, a, I suppose, probably a, a positive thing, wouldn't you say? <laughs> wow, that's just a little windy out. First day of spring. Here we go. All right, and we got to pay taxes. Oh, oh. Yeah, speaking of paying taxes here. Come on, Dieter, let's go. Hold on, kiddo. Whoop, oh, sorry, buds. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we got to go find your mother. We got to pay taxes. Um, if you go to the wife and you give her the money to pay the taxes, it's done like, bam, instant. If I do it, I got to go into town. But we used to pay the taxes to Unigost. Unigost is no more. Um, in that two-day blitz I was telling you about, there she is. Hello. Uh, do me a favor, hold it, oh, dick, do, do. And of course, you got multiple things you can ask her to do in here, depending on you know what you're about, you know whether you're on a king's quest or if you're just you know paying the taxes like we are. Anyway, Uni Ghost. It turns out that he was not the friend we thought. It turns out that he killed my uncle slit his throat in his sleep um, when we found <coughs> Kestrel and she said we have to go talk to Dieter. Dieter was a medic and uh, it turns out that he was witness oh, to well he's the one that dealt with, with the corpse right you know so long story short we find out through him that it was actually Unigost that killed my uncle um, so I confronted him with a big long conversation 15 minutes later after reading 12 pages of text. And uh, so I had him banished from the valley because you have choices. You can have him hung, you can have him uh, just banished from the valley, you can forgive him because you understand why he did what he did, which, yeah, right. Um, so various outcomes and depending on what you do is depending on how the game's going to unfold, right? So not wanting to be viewed as a complete tyrant, um, but not going to let him get away with it either. So long story short, um, he's blackballed, he's banished. Ah, go Dieter, don't you be beating on nobody now. Yeah, here we go, there's the third child right there. Right on, so we've got at least three Gromitus Vomitus floating around. And like that. So yeah, Unighost is gone, and there's a new Castilian now, of course, because, uh, well, nature hates a vacuum, right? There's always somebody willing to step into a position of power. Okay, so I was just saying to these guys here how I really like pineapple on pizza. Guys? Hey, where y'all going? All they said was pineapple goes good on pizza. Guys? Come on! Hey! Oh, fine. I'll eat my pizza by myself. Whatever.